If uh, councillors would like to take their seats, please, we'll commence the uh, first of our council meetings for 2019. Uh, welcome back, everyone, and um, looking forward to to this year. Uh, there, I haven't received any apologies. Uh, no declarations of interest for any of the items on the agenda, so that takes us straight to public participation. And I'd like to invite Evan Smith and Kyle Sutherland uh, from the Avon Otakaro Network um, to talk to us about activating the Otakaro Avon River Corridor. And Peter Beck as well, former, former councillor Peter Beck at the other end of the table. Thank you. Uh, good kutu. Um, you know, I'm, I'm Evan and Carl Sutherland to my left and Reverend Peter Beck to my right. Peter's here in support. Carl and I will, will talk. Um, mainly on issues relating to Avon Otaku Network. Um, so welcome to 2016. We thought we'd 19. get in... Uh, 19. 19. Gosh. <laughs> I'll just go there. <laughs> um, we, we thought we'd get in first this year, um, start the year off with a... a um, discussing what our priorities are for 2019 um, and with the hope that maybe um, you'll be able to support those priorities yourselves. Um, and that priority for us, the main focus, is actually activating the evolving metropolitan asset, which is the Otaka Avon River Corridor. Um, for most of the... Um, the last seven to eight years, as you'll be aware, the the, the red zone has been a no-go zone, uh, a no man's land of despair, destruction, and demolition, where communities dis disintegrated and disappeared, or were divided into two. But over the course of the last um, two to three years, the land has been largely vacated, cleared, and greened, albeit in grass, but with the retention of a lot of valuable trees, shrubs, natives, and fruit trees, and some large exotics. However, the council reserves, roading, riparian margins that lie within the red zone, about 30% of the land area, um, have understandably not been a priority for maintenance. So I'll just turn this off. As no one knew what would become of the land and, um, and what, what the future uses would be. However, that... Um, planning situation has now changed. We have a, a, a draft regeneration plan that's been finalised, ready to go to the Minister. Um, that speaks to a green spine in three major reaches running through the corridor. And it presents a vision which is very closely aligned with the Avon vision that we've had for the last seven and a half years for a multi-purpose river park that runs from city to sea. And we also have now the possibility of leasing Crown land from um, Linz for up to a period of five years. So that has changed the whole um, dynamic of what can happen now in the red zone. In partnership with many others, including council in significant roles, we have worked to activate the, the corridor for the last few years, but increasingly recently. And we, our intention there is to re-engage and reconnect people with the lands and the river. We did that with events such as Spring River Festivals. We've had two of those. Um, River of Flowers has been over seven different uh, ceremonies over the consecutive years. Matariki in the Zone, there's been um, three of those and we now um, collaborate with some of our partners in the Red Zone in, in delivering that. The last one we had 500 people there with um, no Tuareri putting on a hung for us. Um, and we intend to do that and grow that this year as well. Um, and the big event for us each year, um, is for the last two years and this year as well, is uh, Meet in the Middle, um, the event we have at Kerr's Reach. And we had over 5,000 people there last year, wonderful event, very family orientated. Um, just as a side on that particular event, just as something that, just to, to make you aware of some of the issues we have, we are planning now for that event in October this year in order to book the artist, um, we have to actually commit ourselves to $20,000 of funding, which we don't have grant funding for and won't have 
confirmation of until September. So I end up personally bankrolling that 20 grand for that period. If there was some way that we could find of some mechanism to in enable that to happen without it being a personal risk to somebody's personal finances, that would be very useful, but it's about how funding works. Um, but that's a distant issue to raise with you. To make these things happen, we have to commit that far ahead, but there's no way of doing that under the current, current funding arrangements. So I finished with that aside. Um, we also have, as you'll be well aware, done quite a few um, different uh, things with the river trail uh, uh, along the, the river um, with your help um, that was in instituted and we've done some work with um, with you on putting wayfinding signs back up in the red zone and we're working currently with Lynn's to put gaps on all the wire fences with white posts there so that invites people to go actually go and enjoy the land at the moment you can't get over the fences particularly mm. if you've got a baby or a pram um, but just to make it a lot more open and accessible for people um, we're also, uh, as you're probably aware, been installing commemorative assets along the, the corridor. Put the, the piece of the Medway Bridge back last October. And this 22nd of February, we're putting the um, Thanks for the Memories exhibition from that was down at Worcester Boulevard into Retreat Reserve um, with a little, little ceremony uh, on the 22nd yeah. and other commemorative memorial um, things that, and heritage elements are being introduced as the year rolls out. Um, you'll also be aware of some really good community garden initiatives in the red zone with Richmond that's growing and, and wonderful um, asset that has got a lot of community involved um, and has really been really good at strengthening that community. There's also one at Wainoni Church that Betty Chapman runs. Um, we're also doing work with uh, Life and Vacant Spaces in East Burwood, another activation area. Um, there's a pump and jump track there, and just recently, Linz has approved over to Tuff Grove Forest Park, who will be leading most of the natural restoration work now, to be able to plant on Linz land with plant natives there, and they're just preparing it now between Corsa Stream and Brooker Ave. So there's things starting to happen. Um, and in terms of native restoration projects, you'll be aware of our one in Anzac Drive Reserve, the Mahinga Kai Exemplar. Um, this was um, a, 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 a partnership which is quite unique between central, regional, local government, all were involved, iwi, universities, schools and communities, and we all share the strategic plan for that project. Um, that was very hard to, took two to three years to, to, to achieve, but it gave us a lot of lessons about how can we do this on a much wider scale throughout the corridor, um, and we learnt a lot of lessons from that. What we achieved in that over the course of the last four years is that we've planted out 12% of the 11 hectares there in native plants, over 7,000 native plants. Okay. Six and a half thousand voluntary hours went into planting and maintaining. One and a half thousand hours of paid coordination and caretaking has gone in there. Over 35 events, um, five of the major planting events. We also use the um, Mahinga Kai Exemplar as a learning experience outside the classroom um, amenity. We used uh, 22 and a half thousand um, dollars worth of Unlocking Curious Minds funding last year through MB um, to create an investigation in another resource, which was a plug and play program for primary schools that um, was delivered in the school and then they come out in the field. And this here is the kids actually um, looking at the white bait eggs and they understand, you get to understand the, the water cycle, the tidal cycles, and the life cycle of the white bait, the uh, um, iconic Mahingakai species in the Avon. Um, they they will be able to tell their, and they tell their parents exactly what happens and they, they have a very good knowledge of it and it's amazing just how quickly they pick it all up. Even preschoolers go there. Um, three, three to five year olds also really enjoy going there and so we have preschools going along for, for visits. Um, mainly local schools, one school from the west side of town and also to a Hiwi school all came along to, to that. 
we are ex currently extending that with Noitahu and Noturi's help into a, an even bigger um, plug and play program, which is around the, uh, the concept of Mahinga Kai, what it means, and then Inanga are used as the flagship species within that. And that's being written with Noturi and Noitahu, and um, probably won't be delivered this year because we're a bit too late for the spawning season, but it'll be delivered as a package next year. And we use Sean Cavell, our education consultant, who is also contracted to council for all of that work. Um, very professional and um, has worked with us for about three years now on those things. Um, it doesn't mean to say though in Anzac Drive Reserve we don't have challenges. We do run into problems with um, weed management, with maintenance, with security, access and safety. As soon as the site looks un looked after and un unloved, then we have issues with people stealing stuff from their assets like Makukapa sleepers and things like that. Um, as you can see, we've had support from the community board and, and, and cleaning up and things like that. And sometimes we're mowing it ourselves and we're having to, to hire very large mowers to try and chop down those, that grass. Um, so maintenance of the reserve, this is council reserve land, is, is it, we've just been negotiating this last week actually that we can have this put back onto a, a fortnightly schedule so that we can actually have the, the lawns maintained. We are maintaining them elsewhere ourselves and then quite cheaply and then invoicing the council for that work. Um, so there's different ways that it can be done. Um, these activation of the red zone have been highly successful. We did a census last year in August over a two hour period on a cloudy Sunday afternoon and we counted over 500 people using the, the red zone for recreational use during that period. Um, we used the Emergent Leaders um, University of Canterbury students to, to do that for us. Um, what we, we aim to do um, is to increase the number of people if we do the same thing in two years time by a factor of 10 we'd like to see 5,000 people using the red zone in, the, uh, in a two hour period. Just over those recent holidays anecdotally I've heard from quite a few people that I know that have had visitors in Christchurch both domestic and international that they've taken out into the red zone and taken along the trail and the their feedback has been absolutely <coughs> exceptional. They, they see the, probably the asset there probably more clearly than most of Christchurch sees it, I think. Um, I want to just talk briefly about the need. Why is this? It's not just a nice to have. It's a lot more than that. As you're probably aware, in many of the schools, particularly in the east, there's over a 70% clinical diagnosis of PTSD in the kids. That, that's horrendous. Um, we owe it to these kids, to their teachers and their parents, to do all we can to help them heal. And the one way that we can do that more than anything else is to use the asset that's right next door. When they get their hands dirty, when they go out and enjoy the that the countryside explore, they actually understand the environment a lot more. They, they feel at peace with it and they don't fear it anymore. And a lot of that stress dissipates. Mm. So it's really important. We can do stuff that's very cheap and easy to do to help those kids, work with those kids in the schools to use the red zone for this as a valuable asset. Um, that's what motivates us a lot. Um, so for many years, the red zone has been considered a problem, the hazard. We need to turn that on the head, on its head and see it as part of the solution now. Um, and that means that we need to, to look at realising that potential as soon as possible. We can't wait for the regen plan to be delivered in another couple of decades. Mm -hmm. We can start doing stuff now, which is very easy to do. But we can do it, we have to do it smartly, cheaply, and grow it gradually, and then allow the plan to unfold and evolve as time goes on. We've given up using the word transitional. It's tainted by perceptions of ephemerality, temporariness, and lacking real value. Funders don't like investing in things tag transitional anymore. We therefore prefer the term evolutionary, as it's about establishing more and more substantive stepping stones to the future and learning as we go. Now I'll pass over to Kyle.
Um, we, 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 we do have a little bit of a time issue, so but but I'm going to okay. allow some flexibility. Okay. So We're over 10 I minutes already. <laughs> Cheers. We are focusing on two primary areas of the um, Otakaro Avon River Corridor for initial activation. So we've got Richmond and Burwood East, and then we hope to extend into other areas as we go. So in Richmond, uh, the network has projects implemented in, or in the pipeline uh, with Cultivate Christchurch, uh, Revolution Cafe, uh, Richmond Community Garden, Avery House, Tiny House Village, Arts Corner, Riverbend Refuge, Nature Play, Cassaday Bambini Forest, Diamagin's Heritage Garden, Banks Have School Kids Project, and all tied together as a kids adventure trail with swings and trees along the route. In Burwood East, in collaboration with Life and Vacant Spaces, there are plans for similar clusters of activities. Jump tracks, model car tracks, drone flying, natural restoration projects at Anzac Drive and Brooker Ave Red Zone, and the planned Christchurch City Council regeneration of Donnell Park. To maximise the potential of these initiatives, we need Christchurch City Council to come to the party on some matters and we need clear strategic direction from you, the governance team, of the importance of this and the regeneration of not only the East, but of a stunning, evolving metropolitan asset. We understand that there isn't a lot of money to do this and we must make the most of what we have. Um, and with that, we, we want to work smart and strategically. It is in the spirit we come here today not to alert you to expensive investment, but to ask that you work in partnership with us to prior prioritise activation of the Otakaro Avon River Corridor by identifying and acting on smart, strategically targeted interventions. There are pathways through Anzac Drive Reserve that are key to activating Burwood East and connecting to the River Trail. We need these to come back into regular mowing schedules. We need the support in getting some key infrastructure repaired such as culverts, bridge and jetties. And also there's a lack of public toilets, which is also an issue. So for us there's a cost of around $250 uh, every time we want to bring a class out into the field for some field work. Uh, we will assist with fund sourcing, volunteer labour and contractual uh, efficiencies where we can, but timely pro bono technical support from staff to help speaking cost, uh, infrastructure projects would be very useful. Um, also some advice on signage. Just as a quick aside, um, we work very closely with Linda Burns and the, the Parks Visitor Experience team and I can't praise that team enough for the, um, the advice that they give. However, they're only technically able to give that advice on projects on council land. In order to get thematic consistency when we're putting signs on Lynn's land, it would be very useful if we could still mm. get advice from her for those projects as well. So just as an aside, thank you. Uh, support on consenting would also be very useful and perhaps um, even in some cases the wavering of consenting fees and this would go a long way to supporting our work. Uh, we need support with riparian weed management uh, along the waterways, so especially up the Avon Corridor, yellow flag iris is a, a big issue, uh, one which we are looking to target. Um, and we need some support uh, through the budget in this year's annual plan. We think there needs to be a review of the application of the park ranger service in the corridor. Uh, in the past for Anzac Drive, it was switched from regional to urban parks team, and uh, it is more closely aligned with the regional priorities and service levels and will become increasingly so. Uh, there is a need for an agency to take strategic oversight of activation of the Otakaro Avon River Corridor, at least in the interim, and at present there is a vacuum there and it will become even more apparent as Regenerate Christchurch evacuates from the space. Uh, finally, we do come with some solutions though, um, a new program which we are trialling this year uh, called Electrothermal Weed Management. Uh, it uses electricity to systematically kill weeds without the use of um, toxic chemicals such as glyphosate. Uh, Hot Grass Limited in Tauranga has the only machine in New Zealand which we are bringing down to Christchurch and uh, through the help of the Innovation and Sustainability Fund um, we'll use this to scientifically trial it in the red zone as well as other uh, regions in Christchurch um, as a potential um, use for the future to move away from um, herbicides and have more effective long-term use. 
So by t working together with community, iwi, council, universities and schools, we can turn the Otakaro Avon River Corridor into a stunning metropolitan asset that evolves and unfolds over time, but we do need your strong support to do so. We need staff to stop saying, oh, no, that's the red zone. We can't touch that. We have to keep our hands off. And we need more of an approach of, oh, you are activating the corridor. That's a priority focus for us. How can we help? Mm. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. That's, um, it's, yeah, it's a tremendous presentation. And, uh, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll take that away and, um, and uh, certainly, certainly give give some of the issues some thought. I mean, I've, I've kind of, you know, I, I think it's a very good concept to shift from the transition to the evolutionary. I think that's a fantastic um, model and a fantastic way to think. So thank you. Food for thought. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Cheers. Um, uh, there are no deputations by appointment. Uh, we have no presentation of petitions. Um, I'd like to move that we include the supplementary report in the meeting, um, uh, public excluded item 21, resource consent matters. I'll move that. Do I have a seconder? Seconded by Andrew. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Um, I'll move the uh, council and committee minutes and block. Um, do I have a seconder for that? Andrew, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. And um, can I just move on to a, a, an item that's not on the agenda and, uh, and um, the fact that it's not on the agenda would require me to mention uh, Standing Order 6.11, items of business not on the agenda which cannot be delayed. Um, and uh, under the standing order, the meeting may resolve to deal with an item that is not on the agenda, and uh, I have to provide uh, uh, during the public part of the meeting the reason the item is not on the agenda and the reason why the discussion of the item cannot be delayed until a subsequent meeting. Um, and uh, there, there is uh, an ability for this report to be um, verbal when a written report is not um, practical. So. The, the, the reason that um, I want Council to deal with this new item of business, so there's a two-stage process and it's up there on the board. One is, is, is to resolve to deal with the new item of business, Akaroa Community Health Centre funding request. And the second um, element of it is the resolution, which is to refer it to the Finance and Performance Committee of the Whole um, and de delegating decision-making authority in respect of the report. This is an item of business that has been to the uh, sorry the Banks Peninsula Community Board, and it makes recommendations around um, a process to be followed uh, uh, in relation to the um, uh, funding of the Akaroa Community Health Centre uh, and a mechanism for a uh, targeted rate, uh, which requires um, uh, to be. If it, is, if it is agreed by the Akaroa community or by the hearings panel ultimately or by referendum, whichever process uh, is ultimately applied, uh, then the only way to impose a targeted rate is to do so in the context of the annual plan. But this isn't an annual plan matter per se because it is not part of the consultation document for the annual plan. It is solely about Akaroa and their decision. So rather than have this on the scheduled uh, agenda item for the 12th of February, which is when we're considering the annual plan to go out for consultation, um, I'm very keen that we separate it from the annual plan process and create as much time as possible for an appropriate consultation and potentially a, a referendum as well. So um, what I want to do is to bring the item forward from the 12th of February um, Council annual plan meeting agenda onto the Finance and Performance Committee um, meeting agenda. It is a, um, it's the first of the committees of the whole, um, but it, 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 it does enable um, the matter to get um, kicked off straight away, and I, I, I would certainly support that. So I would like to move that the Council resolve to deal with the new item of business, Akaroa Community Health Centre funding request at this meeting. I have a seconder for that. Andrew? I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. 
and um, the resolution here. I, I, would you like to move the resolution, Andrew? Yes, please. I'll second the resolution. <laughs> I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you very much. Um, so the next item of the agenda um, is item 12, hearings panel report to the Council on review of speed limits in the southern central um, city. And uh, Mike, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Um, the recommendations from the hearing panel is for the Council to approve the defined sections of St Asaph Street and Hagley Ave to be 30 kilometres per hour, and also the defined sections of Oxford Terrace and Antigua Street to be 10 kilometres per hour. Um, there are also a number of, number of other recommendations from the hearing panel which are outlined in the report, including the gateways. Um, there are over 700 written submissions to this consultation and close to 30 wanting to be heard. Um, we're all obviously aware that the majority of the submissions um, that re we received opposed the lowering of the speed limits. Um, obviously, however, that public submissions form one part of the decision making. The hearings panel weighed up the reasons for and against and the information provided from both internal and external sources in determining this recommendation. It must be mentioned that many of the submissions against this proposal did not relate to the item in front of us or give a reason for the opposition. The consultation actually appeared to give a number of submitters a chance just to simply vent. There are a number of important facts that came through during this process. Independent safety reviews for this street all recommend lowering the speed limit to 30 km per hour. The current 30 km per hour speed zone in the central city has reduced average speeds on these streets and during the period they have been in place there have been fewer crashes in the slow zone. Our Tafiti Unlimited Discovery School is scheduled to open in April this year with a roll of 565 which is expected to go to 670 by 2021 and this is the year 0 to 13 school. Metro Sports Facility is also situated on this street. Whether it is a 30 or 50 km per hour street will make no difference to travel times down this part of St Asa Street. Lowering the speed limit will not cause more congestion. A person hit by a car doing 50 km per hour will probably die whereas someone hit by a car doing 30 km per hour probably won't die. The percentage risk of being killed dropped from 80% to 10%. The hearings panel did make some changes to the recommendations and these are listed in 6.2 of the report. Of note is the recommendation not to extend the 30 km zone on Rickland Ave. This is mainly due to the design of the street, um, which is obviously totally different to St Asa Street, um, and actually at this area, the, the lack of pedestrian use. Uh, I think that pretty much covers everything, unless staff have other stuff to add. Um, I'm happy to move it to when we're at that point. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to accept that you've moved the report as the, um, as the chair of the hearings panel. Um, so, uh, I think because this is so integrally linked to the next one, I'd invite staff to come to the table um, and uh, sort of open it up for for questions. I think, can I just begin, because I, I, I often think that there's a, a general misunderstanding publicly about the, um, the 30k zone or the slow zone for the central city or the core, central city core um, and uh, most people don't know that there was an order in council that was passed uh, um, by the um, previous government uh, in December 2014 which established the zone so um, it took some time after the um, the bylaw was essentially changed by central government for us to implement the changes in terms of the street layout and the and the notification. But the, the changes were made by order and council. So the question that uh, a lot of people would have is that if that process was gone through, why was St Asaph Street not included? because my reading of the Order and Council was that everything north of St Asaph Street in that block um, was to be included, 
but it didn't mention St Asaph Street and, and that of course doesn't make sense to people looking at what St Asaph Street has become now. So perhaps you could take me through the intention of the um, chapter of the Central City Recovery Plan that, that really saw the south frame, I think, as the extent of the, um, of the 30k area. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, uh, I, I think in, in, a, in consistency with the recovery plan, which set the, the land areas for the south and the east frames, I think at the time, in terms of setting a low speed limit for the heart of the central city, there was seen to be logic in using the boundary of the south and the east frames as a logical point to enter the 30 kilometre an hour zone. So for instance, if you look at Madras Street, the entrance to the 30 kilometre an hour zone is west of Madras Street. So Madras Street itself sits just outside of it. At that time, um, this, it was clear the south frame would contain a mix of uses there. Um, however, at that time, when the 30 kilometre an hour limit was set, it was less clear then that a, an activity such as, for instance, the Discovery School would be placed within the South Frame. And, and so, um, with that, the, the subsequent placement of Metro Sports and indeed the, the growth of businesses uh, to the south of St Asaph Street, which is already evidenced in crossing activity throughout the corridor, uh, has meant that um, as officers we felt it was logical to, to keep in mind what the logical speed limit should be as we look to the future on St Asaph Street. So, um, it, it, it wasn't there also that the cycleways were going. The cycleway really was going to be the centre of the South Frame. Yeah, yeah. That so was the original so, intention. Yeah, so the original intention of the South Frame was a little bit different than how it's, um, I guess, evolved to, and it was a bit more of a campus um, frame that would would um, concentrate the development north of the frame. As um, and within the South Frame, there was going to be the. Um, the separator cycle, or well, the cycle facility all the way through east-west. That was going to be the main east-west movement. And uh, that didn't happen because some of the businesses didn't sell and then they remained? Yeah, I'm, that... I'm, not, I'm not too sure why that hasn't developed that way, but as a result, I guess, we've had, um, and the way the city's developed, Sanasa Street actually developed reasonably early and there's a lot of, um, I guess, businesses and um, uh, hospitality that established um, on Sanasa Street, just south of that frame, which has changed the environment of Sanasa Street for what it was initially intended. Yeah. So, so you've got the, the, the cycle lane, was, were, were never going to go on the one-way streets. They were going to go in the centre of the south frame, and you were going to have the... Um, and, and there was a lot more business developed early on Sanasa Street, and then um, post that decision around the, the the slow zone, the decision around the school was made as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's a substantially different environment from the one that was being considered when the blueprint was established. And, and in terms of the effectiveness of any speed limit, for them to, be wor to work and to be effective, they have to appear to be sensible and appropriate to the majority of drivers. Yeah. Uh, and so... Uh, if St Asaph Street a couple of years ago had been 30 kilometres an hour with very little development along the south frame at that point, I think it would have been reasonable for drivers to view a 30 kilometre an hour limit at that point as unrealistic and unreasonable. But what we are seeing is rapid growth of development along the corridor there, rapid growth of pedestrian and cycle activity along the corridor and so in terms of speed management for the central city it's always wise for us as officers to be mindful of the need for agility to the to be mindful of the need to keep an eye on are the speeds in the central city appropriate for the activity there so i think as the chairman of, of the panel has already indicated um, the existing 30 kilometre an hour zone has been effective 
it has reduced some in, in the order of a 36% reduction in the number of injury casualties within the zone. In, the in two, what period? Sorry. In the Th two years after it was installed compared with the two years beforehand. 36% 36 36 reduction. 36% okay. reduction in the number <coughs> of... What were the numbers? Uh, no, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm, you can yeah, join us. 36% sounds great, but if there are only four accidents and they're reduced by one. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm, okay. okay. I mean, I don't know if you've got the actual numbers. Yes, we do. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so in the two years leading up to um, the change, there was uh, 52 uh, reported injuries. How many? 52. Yeah. And that's from, from crashes, and then um, subsequent for the two-year period afterwards, there's 33. So it's a 36.5 percent reduction in injury crash injuries. Okay. So and, and sorry, I'm, I've just got a couple of other questions, and then I'll. I'll, I'll and it's I'll, perhaps I'll, helpful, Madam Chair, just to clarify that 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 in order to have a a sort of benchmark for well, would that have happened anyway? Um, the equivalent figures for the remainder of the CBD, so that's the 50 kilometre an hour zone out to the avenues, over the same period, um, injury accidents reduced from 74 to 70. So a 5.4% reduction outside the 30 zone, a 36% reduction inside it. We have analysed traffic flows we have, as to... to to attempt to examine whether there was any other reason why that level of reduction might have been achieved, we've been unable to isolate any other key factor that would have led to that level of reduction. And those results are not dissimilar to 30 kilometre an hour, 20 mile an hour zones elsewhere in the world. Those are fairly typical results for this level of speed reduction. So it's statistically significant, is yes. the description. You know, and I think it's also worth noting that um, within that time, uh, the, the city is, is growing quite a bit. So there's more people coming into the central city, more pedestrians in the central city. Um, we've got people coming back to the central city, re-familiarising themselves with landmarks and where to go on that. So all those factors would could potentially lead to an increase in crashes, but in fact we're getting a decrease, and we're also sort of against the, the national trend at the moment as well. So I think there's some, so it's looking pretty favourable at the moment. Yeah, I mean, what what I've read in the report, sort of, and and this is I guess my, my last question is that um, there is a there is a sense in reading the material that you're drawn to the conclusion that there is. There is no alternative other than to um, accept the reduction as recommended by the hearings panel, and I'm referring specifically to Sanasif Street in this regard. Um, and and due to the inevitability of that, you know, the the consultation process doesn't feel right to me because you know the you know you count the numbers and you say X number said they wanted this and X number wanted that. Um, but it doesn't feel like that there is that, um, you know, I mean, is there something wrong with our requirements around consultation when in fact there's, it's almost obligatory when you get to the, the kind of safety um, assessment of Sanasif Street? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, the, as, as, as all councillors will be well aware the government policy statement on land transport was published last year. Um, in that government policy statement, the, the, the government have placed increased emphasis on safety outcomes for New Zealand roads across the piece in order to deliver a, a safe, what's become known as a safe system approach to road safety. Uh, within that policy statement, the government have announced an intention to review the road safety strategy nationally over the coming year to 18 months, and we're expecting a reframed national road safety strategy to be published by the government later this year, probably in draft initially. It's quite clear from the text of the GPS that the government is seeking to place increased emphasis on speed management mm. as part of that safe system. And in fact, if you read the, the fine print of the GPS, within that, the government is seeking to review the regulatory barriers to, accept, to accelerate the implementation of the speed management guide, um, which they're also indicating to update. Um, this is one of the 
um, difficulties we believe as, as officers, Madam Chair, is that the Council is obliged to consult over speed limits under the speed management setting mm. rule. And to some degree, those road safety outcomes and objectives are a little in tension with the Council's obligations to consult the community under the Local Government Act and to seek their views. In fact, the speed limit rule requires us to consult the community over their views. It's understandable that the community, in responding to a consultation like this, if they don't understand what the true road safety benefits may be arising from this, it's understandable that people would likely write to us and say we don't believe this is the right way forward and yeah. so uh, we believe as officers it would be good if the council and other local authorities had improved guidance from the government as to how to deal with these apparently intention. Yes because it's not a referendum but it is um, an opportunity to provide Absolutely. feedback which might be appropriate in terms of road layout but less yeah. appropriate in terms of mm. speed yes. limits yeah okay Sarah I know I've got Tim um, thank you can I first question to the, the chair of the hearing if I may um, you said that some of the people presenting verbal and or whether it's verbal or written were venting what do you think what that was oh. Look, there was a variety of reasons that yeah. people obviously want to vent within the city. Like, a lot of these people haven't actually been into the city or the state haven't been into the city. They're making statements about how bad it is in there, um, which is just a hearsay statement and it wasn't actually relevant to what we were, we were looking, looking at. Um, so it just appeared that there were a number of submitters, um, instead of actually looking at the information that was provided through this um, consultation process and the decision that we were making, we're just having an um, event on actually some of the aspects of the, the CBD, whether it be the other speed zones around the city or the cycleways or some of the designs um, that Otakaro had done. Um, it wasn't focused on the actual substantive issue in front of us. Okay. Thank you. Um, first one to staff. Um, Sinatha Street, Basically, from those safety audits, has been designed to be a 30k street, really, hasn't it? At the moment, it's it's been designed to be a safe street in the heart of the central city. Yes, and 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 the engineering designs and the layout of the intersections and so on are in accordance with that. Given the international <coughs> guidance, that the appropriate and go beyond speed limit, it's about the typical speeds that most drivers will drive at. So in engineering terms, we're designing these streets to be broadly self-enforcing. If it relies upon police speed enforcement, then in a way we failed as engineers to deliver an appropriate speed environment. So it's always been designed to achieve a broadly self-enforcing, self-explaining low speed environment. Our view now is, and that's backed up by the independent safety and functionality review of the corridor that council commissioned, is that making the street formally a 30 mile an hour speed limit would be more consistent with the design that's been achieved. Thank you. Uh, I Sinesta Street in, in some parts is changing with regard to the, the school, the, um, the Metro Sports, and perhaps some would argue that Hebley Community College outside that should have been 40k years ago before any of this happened anyway. But with all that, that change, if the safety audits are saying it should be 30k's etc, but this council decides to stay ma maintain 50k's, what would be the requirements changes on St Asif Street to keep in with regards to safety levels? Well the council is in receipt of a wider safety and functionality review for the corridor which it commissioned post the implementation of the works on St Asif Street. So this was to look independently at what other changes council might need to make in order to make the corridor work better and to address 
the concerns that have variously been raised by members of the community, frontage businesses and so on around the layout of it. The primary recommendation in that report was to lower the speed limit to 30 yeah. kilometres an hour and that delivers a number of, of benefits. Not only does it deliver improvements for the safety of people crossing the street, but it also delivers improvements in terms of drivers exiting the corridor to enter or leave driveways, of which there are a number along there, and also enter and leave on-street parking bays along there, where they feel pressured under the speed limit. So if council were not to approve that independent recommendation for a 30 kilometer an hour limit there, uh, that report will be presented in full to the ITE committee probably in the March cycle and and so other measures would then need to be addressed in order to improve the safety of the corridor. That then begins to press us to review the level of on-street parking on the southern side of the corridor in order to improve intervisibility between turning drivers and the cycle lane there. It is possible that if the speed limit were remain at 50 kilometres an hour, there could be more pressure in order to deliver a safe environment that we would need to look at the removal of more parking than is otherwise the case with the 30 kilometre an hour speed limit. Now I can't provide further detail around that, but certainly the way the report is presented to us, that's why the 30 kilometre an hour limit is the primary first recommendation in it, because the rest of the report arises from that recommendation. If, as I say, if council were not to approve the 30 limit there, it is possibly the case that we may need to look seriously in short order at the level of remaining on street parking that is there, which has then other tensions and challenges for the community and particularly frontage businesses. Mm -hmm. So it may not be uh, a, a more straightforward outcome. Dion, thank you. Yeah, just um, when you talk about the 36% reduction in the slow speed zone um, of, of accidents, does that, what was it specifically for St. Asif Street at the moment? I mean, obviously there's been change in design, and you've said you've, you've changed the design to be safer. So what's the reduction just from the design? Uh, we did present figures to the hearings panel in December around the reduction reductions in casualties on St Asaph Street itself, which of course is still remains as a 50 kilometre an hour speed limit, um, there have certainly been improvements in safety on the corridor as a result of the engineering works. And, and we've, we've sort of looked at, again at, at the surrounding factors of, of traffic levels and so on. And it's, it's almost inescapable that some of those changes in casualty levels there almost certainly result from the change in engineering works, which was sort of installed about late 2007, earlier last year. Do you, I'm do you have the specific numbers? I have got the figures here with me. Um, I, uh, but certainly we, we did report those in full to the panel on the 7th of December, so they yeah, will I think be it's important. Well, it's important to know that because obviously you, you're saying the slow speed zone is reducing traffic, but also it's in context of design as well. I think that's important to note as well so that we actually understand is it the speed that is going to make the difference or is it design or are we actually solving the problem where there's no problem? So, as I've said earlier, we believe it's both. That the, 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 the streets are being designed to achieve a lower operating speed environment, or let's put it that way, an operational speed that most drivers will adhere to. And there are always some drivers who, who will drive above the speed limit. That just happens. That's life. Um, but what we're looking for is to achieve a consistently lower speed right across the network and to reduce the variation between slower drivers and faster drivers. 
and the, the safety on the network overall is heavily influenced by the range of speeds that are on the network. If you can, if you can lower the range of speeds between faster and slower drivers, you get a disproportionate improvement in safety. Yeah, no, I know. I get what you're saying, but we're talking about the safety of, of, of what I'm trying to understand is we're talking about the safety of the, 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 the corridor. Yes. Um, and I want to know specifically, is it just going to be around speed or has the design that we've done on St. Asif Street already achieved that desired outcome of we reducing believe it has. safety? From okay. the information we... and and. It's not totally stati statistically reliable at this stage because it is very early. The engineering measures were really only finished very early last year, so we've got a very short period of time for us to draw. We can't draw full conclusions from it, but the indications are that the engineering changes do appear to have begun to improve safety there. Okay. Um, we believe then the 30 mile an hour, uh, the 30 kilometer an hour limit, as the consultants have recommended, is more consistent with that design. Okay, I've got Green. a couple more oh. questions. If okay. that's okay. Sorry. Um, you're talking about acceptable limit to drivers for for you know uh, the the environment around it. Mm. Uh, so I've got a question around the area after Montreal Street. Um, where you've got the car yards, you've got the former host, uh, former police station, um, and then you've got around the Metro Sport, which is still developing, and then on the other side, there's just nothing there. Uh, so do you think 30 kilometre along those two city blocks is actually what, what you were saying, acceptable to drivers in terms of um, you know, what they'd expect the speed limit to be? Um, to, to lower the speed on St Asaph Street, um, council would need to consider a new entry point to the 30 kilometer an hour limit at some point south of St Asaph Street. So the engineering designs have merely arrived at a suitable entry point I'm for the threshold. So, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm talking about St Asaph Street past Montreal Street, so those two blocks where, I mean, you were saying that um, if you lower the speed limit, drivers will have, um, well, expect an acceptable limit around the built environment and other things like that. So what I'm saying oh, see, around sorry, those other yeah. parts of the city that haven't developed, yeah. do you think those two blocks will actually have, well, for drivers, would they expect that to be a 30 kilometre limit, given that the development and the type of uh, network that's around that area? Well, Metro Sports facility is under construction now. So I think as this year wears on, um, it's, it's frontage its northern access will be onto St Asa Street. So uh, as the year wears on, the level of frontage building and frontage activity will increase along there. I think that western end of the corridor, which I completely accept, at the moment there is less there. Um, but actually, over, over the next 18 months to two years, the whole nature of the appearance of it there will change dramatically. Can, can I just add, also add that currently there's actually quite a lot of um, movement sort of north and south in that area of the of Street as well for people transitioning towards the, the hospital and the um, and that part of the, the city I suppose so it's not just the going along Snasser Street it's people moving across Snasser Street uh, and of course as far as the road works themselves are concerned and the carriageway well um, the new separated cycle lane and the new landscaping that's all now finished on that western end of St Asa Street. So the whole cross-section of the road there and its appearance has already changed significantly and will change again as the Metro Sports facility is constructed. I've just got one more question, yep. if that's OK. Um, around, so obviously in the Herons panel, I, I suggested um, from a lot of the feedback that was in the um, consultation was from the um, members who were going to be at the school or families that were going to be at their school there. So. What was the reason that we're probably not going to just look at a school speed zone around that block where the school is? Um, Rather the, than changing the whole speed the, limit of the street? Because of the other activities along the, the corridor, um, we're already seeing um, the South Town development uh, off of Well Street um, from some video footage the panel saw um, as part of the Smart Cities program. At the panel, we saw video footage of a considerable amount of pedestrian activity between the Little High um, 
area and south of St Asaph Street there. Uh, I think the, the, the problem of putting a, a speed limit in it is just focused on the school zone itself is that firstly it would begin to draw driver's attention to the need to only slow down over that bit by the school and so potentially there's a bit of a, a safety migration you might get to the other ends of the corridor and secondly that the school has unusual operating hours so it has a, a, a longer entry and exit time during the morning and afternoon so a normal school speed zone wouldn't be as effective mm. and the other thing is as we've seen from septed reports on the corridor and so on there's an awful lot of nighttime pedestrian activity mm. along there and again if a speed zone finished at say six o'clock in the evening it would offer no safety improvements to pedestrians crossing the road there at night so we believe that 30 kilometre an hour limit 24-7 for the corridor is the right approach and the consultants, obviously, independent reviewers have recommended the same. Yep. Annie? Um, thank you. Um, and thank you very much for sending through the fatality information um, in the last 15 years. What struck me about the, that information, and I'd just kind of be interested in your response, is that none of those fatalities have happened in an area where we've proposed or are looking at 30k. In fact, the areas where people have been killed in the central city, with the exception I think of one on Kilmore Street, um, which was a car going up the wrong way, um, or a bus, sorry, a bus going through a red light, are all in areas where you haven't got any proposal for 30k. So I'm just trying to understand why the focus on this part when the areas where people have died as a result of being hit by vehicles are not being addressed. Okay. So fatalities within the, in the network sadly are very rare and random events. Um, the difference between a serious crash and a fatality can sometimes be just happenstance. It may be the, 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 the physical health of the people involved and their ability to withstand those crash forces. Uh, most of the evidence before us is simple physics. Um, if a person steps into the road and is hit at 50 kilometres an hour, they achieve the velocity of the vehicle almost instantly. Mm. From the figures we heard from Councillor Davison earlier, in a way it's a wonder that any human being ever survives a crash at 50 kilometres an hour. By reducing the speed to in the region of 30 kilometres an hour. Firstly, you give the driver more time to see the person stepping out and slowing. And bearing in mind, we're looking at children crossing this road, probably in high numbers. You give a driver more time to react, and you also then, by the time they reach contact point with that pedestrian, the vehicle has already slowed. So you've had a disproportionate reduction in the momentum in right. which you are Sorry, hitting I, I that understand, I totally understand that, but looking at the information and the evidence, mm. it would appear that the areas where people, um, and I mean, the number of submissions say that people aren't going the 30, maybe people are going more to the mm. 40 in the current 30K, but St. Nassau Street people are going 30. There doesn't seem to be any evidence that shows that this is a corridor and an area where people are being hit by vehicles. No, 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 sorry, fatalities isn't a measure of being hit. Yeah, I mean, right. I think that's no, what it Tim's is. just asked. In terms of that, it is all about, it's about addressing risk. Um, so, risk so what we heard, sorry, what we heard this morning you're, You've only measured fatalities, Yanni. We've just yeah. heard advice this morning about the number of serious injuries. Yeah, and I think oh, that was a point I was going to make, if I may, is that uh, fatality is only one statistic. Yeah. Um, and one of those is actually on Manchester Street, which is within the 30k speed limit. Um, uh, the, the other, if the statistics were already talked about and talked about um, all reported injuries. Now, it's also worth remembering that people sometimes have, I guess, lifetime consequences from being injured in car crashes. It's not just all. Um, have a crash and yourself become 100 percent. You know, I get correct. that. So it's not you just have, about fatalities. I understand that. Impact, but so. as I understand it, we had a, last time we considered this issue, we had a, re a request to review the central city speed limits. A number of submitters have made the point that they live in other areas like Gracefield Ave and in those smaller narrow streets or Stewart Street that they would like lower speed limits through 
through there. I, I just, I'm just trying to understand how we go from reviewing all the central city speed limits to just doing the St Asaph Street corridor when the evidence seems because to show... Because we asked staff to do this. That the there other was an areas. earlier report, Yanni, that asked them to do this. Right. I mean, I'm quite... So when are we getting the other report back? Well, we've already been having discussions about the methodology and the process for um, bringing about change in speed limits, particularly those that are generated from the community yep. themselves. So, but I mean, we've had an entire discussion about that, and, and that will therefore generate a report... Um, to the ITI committee. Um, so so um, uh, we, are, we are focusing on the areas where speed limits are inappropriately set at 50k and local communities want to see them reduced. So we're going to get a report on that um, in the next uh, few weeks. Pauline, do you recall when you're expecting to get a report on that to your committee? Stage no. So, I mean, but, part of this, but it's not so, far away. Yeah. No, so it be as you away. read as yeah, you read through the submissions, what comes through really clearly from people that are concerned about the proposal is the fact that there's a total confusion within the central city in terms of signage, speed limits, enforcing um, people actually human behaviour, driving to the thing. That the people that were concerned, I've read through the submissions, and and I, I don't agree that a lot of the people were just you know waffling or being vexatious, actually there's some very legitimate concerns that people have raised who have thought about it. So I just had a question in regards to, you know, um, that what, what advice back have staff given to the hearings panel in regards to the legibility of the inner city speed limits, particularly there's been comments around the number of, for example, traffic lights, the number of signs, just the total confusion that people face with all these different um, signs and, and variety of speed limits. So, so I guess um, part of the issue with the legibility is that um, we've been waiting from the, the approaches from the south of the city to, to I guess, find out what the outcome of Sinassa Street is. So if you're currently travelling up Montreal Street, for example, entering into the 30k zone, you come across Sinassa Street and you've got a couple of 30k signs. And those ones are there in place, <coughs> excuse me, um, until we find out whether the the um, change point is going to be north or south of St. Street. And as, as part of this package of works, if the 30k is uh, approved by Council, then there are some um, additional thresholds that are going to um, speak thresholds that will go in uh, south of St. Street. We've also got a, um, a, a program of work that's been underway at the moment where we're just going within the 30k, reinforcing some of the signage and some of the markings on the road to try and reinforce that speed limit as well. So just two final questions. One is, why not just do 40k through the entire four AVs and then put special zones, you know, outside the school, outside the hospital to reduce speed? Why can we not just do that? So the um, speed management guide is quite um, sort of clear on the on us having to set safe and appropriate speeds, and um, it, it's basically recommending that for um, within the central city. Um, or for areas that have um, high place function and a concentration of active road users, that 30 k now is an appropriate speed for that. Um, the 40s is more generally towards uh, <coughs> residential areas, um, and that's why we've, got a, we've done the ones like Preston's and, um, and Knightsbridge, etc. The, um, the difference in that is also the variable 40, and that's around, I guess, where, there's, uh, where the risk is sort of concentrated in one location and also it's not a continuous risk as well. So the three different categories are quite specific and it indicates that 30 k's is a more appropriate speed for the central city. On top of that, the international research and the, and the local research and the local evidence um, is indicating that 30 k's is the appropriate speed for, for where you've got um, uh, CBDs and um, high activity areas. Right. And, and the final question was in regards to Stewart Street, which seems like a very small kind of issue. but. Everyone was kind of supportive of Stewart Street being extended. It's outside the Metro Sports. I couldn't see any logic for not extending Stewart Street. It's a tiny little narrow street with a bend all the way up to Morehouse Ave. Why, why is that not um, being Madam supported? Madam Chair, we have. Um, so the, the proposal for the entry point to the threshold presented to the panel was, um, was to 
the, the panel have agreed to the extension of the threshold entry point to south of the bend on Stewart Street to a point immediately north of Belfort Terrace. The panel asked us to keep that under review um, post the construction of the Metro Sports facility, which would probably, as you've just said, uh, Councillor, would probably warrant at that point a review of some of those speed limits on those streets in the southwestern corner of the central city. So the proposal before Council today does extend the 30k entry point on Stewart Street about 150 metres south of the original consultation proposal. Sorry, does it? I'm just looking at the map and sorry, I've I've seen the staff advice on it, which wasn't to extend it. So no, 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 but the, the hearing the panel has agreed panel to extend has, it. Yeah. So just on the map, um, so we don't, I don't have Balfour Street, but here's the, the original threshold. Are you talking about moving it after the bend? It, the, the proposal to before Mohasa council today, the, the original consulted gateway uh, threshold was just south of St. Asa Street, about 30 metres south. Um, the proposal before council today extends it about 100, 150 metres further south to a point immediately north of Balfour Terrace. So south of the bend. Um, south of the bend, uh, which was the primary concern from a number of the submitters on Stewart Street that they felt the 30k would be better through that bend rather than happening north of it. Um, it's, some asked for it to be extended all the way to Morehouse Avenue, but again, we felt it was best probably to review that as part of the access arrangements for Metro Sport. So is that more of a just, item 13? Is it that that's more explicit in item 13 right. in the yes. recommendation for yes. what we're doing? Yes. Um, oh, you want to deal with it when we get there? Because uh, I just can't understand why you wouldn't just make it to Morehouse Ave, given that you've got Metro Sports there and you've got a natural threshold coming off Morehouse Ave. Um, probably for similar reasons we've just discussed, and that is that Metro Sports is not there at the moment. But it's uh, going to be there. And so, um, and it may not just be Stuart Street that we need to review. We so may need to look at so 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 some of the Hang on, but I, th I think that perhaps in order to um, sort of uh, enable Councillor Henson to see that he's actually got what he wants. I've, I've got the map now, so. Why don't we... Why don't we um, add in a phrase that enables um, enables uh, you to just come back to council with a recommendation on a couple of these areas after keeping them under review? Because um, I mean, the, we don't want to start another consultation um, when when you know and. and I mean, this is always the, the, the trouble, you know, like under the Resource Management Act, you can't take future allocation or requirements into account when you're considering a, you know, so it, it, it seems to me that it's better to, to put the, the rules in place at the time that they are going to be um, effective. Mm. So... Um, I'll save it for the day. Yeah. I guess it's a matter of process. If we're on item 12, how can we be just making change or just recommendations to item 13? And no, I'm talking about making a recommendation change to item 12. Yeah, uh, Vicky. Just at the moment, in terms of driving down St Asif Street and the staging of the traffic lights, what's the actual speed that you're likely to be going? Progression speed is typically about 30 kilometres an hour. About 30 kilometres an hour. So actually what's happening on St Asif Street is cars are travelling at 30 kilometres an hour. For most of the time. Yeah, um, but we but have a, a speed limit that's out of line with what's actually happening. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so, so there was that, that um, particular one. Um, I also had an issue around um, Rickard and Ave in front of the Christchurch Hospital. And uh, again, it's not so much the the, I don't know, which way am I going? The easterly route, I'm not worried, I'm not so worried about that one. It's the westerly route doesn't make sense to me at the moment, but um, the suggestion is that that is something that could be kept under review for a while. Um, yes, certainly, Madam Chair. 
Um, I mean, the original consultation proposal recommended extending the 30 kilometre an hour entry point further yeah. west on Rickerton Avenue yeah. to a point just west of the new emergency, St John's emergency access, which is effectively at the western boundary of the hospital. Um, in view of some of the evidence the panel had before them, the, the, the panel felt quite rightly, I think, that the whole look and feel of Rickerton Avenue there is very different to St Asaph Street and Hagley Avenue. And so I think they were less convinced that the community as a whole and typical drivers would see an extension of 30 there at the moment um, to be as, as realistic as it perhaps is on the other roads. Um, so um, the extension there at the moment doesn't mean we can't achieve a safe access to the emergency services access there. That can go ahead and that's all fine. Um, but council could, if it wished, instruct staff to keep the safety, um, safety and speed regime of that section of Rickerton Avenue under review in consultation with perhaps St John's Ambulance and the and the CDHB and we and and we could report back to you further. We have consulted over it already. Yes. And, uh, and and so and that's that's my point. It's it, it's to actually um, enable you to come back for for agreement without going out to Mm. Additional consultation and throwing Belfast Street into, yeah. so into you, that you could leave or it on Stewart the table Street or whatever, in, whichever in one it is. Yeah, you could and leave it on the table. In effect, Madam Chair. Well, it's it's not so much leave it on the table. It's the open. Open for yeah, open for review, mm. so that you can come back to us if there's a recommendation to yeah. extend. Yeah. yeah. So you could instruct us to keep it under review. Can somebody write some words that would make it sense of that? Right, um, sorry, who had their hand up here? Jimmy. Oh, yes, simply, please, 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 that's a 50 or 60 the kilometer. But suddenly, you know, if you are, you know, know this, uh, the, the, the kind of reduce the loss the speed limit to the uh, 30 kilometer because no entry the, this new uh, kind of the speed limit series for entry location. I'm pretty concerned more and more the pedestrian cross from the the other side, the, uh, the no. no, it doesn't go uh, there. To the hospital, and also pedestrian, the all patient, the all as well as mm. visitors. Mm. This is a serious issue. This section in front of uh, the hospital. This is my concern. Mm. Yes. So, through you, through through you, Madam Chair, the majority of pedestrians crossing between the hospital and around the hospital corner. Uh, there do cross within the 30 kilometer an hour speed limit and within the traffic signals there. Um, the proposal to extend the 30 further out west along Rickerton Ave Avenue was really more prompted by the new emergency services access and so the, the recommendation there really was to assist ambulances turning in and out of there but you know we, we are dealing with a situation in so much as that's only effective if the majority of drivers see it to be realistic and 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 appropriate and so it's quite possible that when that new emergency access is achieved and people are seeing ambulances turning in and out of there then there may be an environment then where if council's instructed us to keep it under review, that may be the appropriate time to consider its extension to that point at that time. Can I just ask, um, in terms of um, alerting people to the fact that this is a hospital zone, mm. um, would the speed, uh, you know, reducing to 30k be an indication to people that this is a, a specific area that care needs to be taken? Yes, I, I think it would assist that, but again, it will probably assist it better when that new emergency access has actually been achieved. At the moment, um, if we did it tomorrow, I, I think most people would wonder why we'd extended the 30 so far along Rickerton Avenue. Yeah. 
probably. So I, I, I think in the fullness of time, yes, it would achieve a larger buffer, lower speed zone right across the frontage of the hospital. But the, the emergency access is not far away. It's, it, it will happen, I believe, this year. Um, so we, you know, we're not looking at a, a long period of time before I think the logic of that may be more, may be more obvious. Thanks, Tim. Just um, furthering that discussion a wee bit, wouldn't it make sense to have a, a, a slower speed, knowing that there is going to be an emergency entrance, that, that, that vehicles could be speeding in and out of there? Would, would, it, would a lowered speed um, give um, an indication or almost a warning that people should anticipate? So, so that was the proposal, but at, at, as I say, I, I think our difficulty at the moment is that that emergency access hasn't been achieved there. That's quite a lightly trafficked access at the moment. And so it's about the pr how pragmatic it is to a typical driver, why 30 here? And, and I think the environment is going to change again when that emergency access exists. And so if council instructs us today to keep that under review, um, then uh, we can report back to ITE committee um, with the appropriate resolutions at that time. Uh, I would suggest, Madam Chair, probably it is in consultation with St. John's and mm -hmm. CDHB. Um, and yeah. So is there any indication of how long that's going to be before that emergency entrance is um, up and running? Well, I, I I think the access arrangements have already been before the community board have been approved. Um, I think the consents for it have been issued. So I think it is, I don't know the exact date, but I think it is imminent. I don't know where the mic knows. April. 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 Yeah, potentially delayed from April. The, uh, yeah, the uh, soft opening may start then, but it's looking more like September, and if it's not that, it'll be next year. So we should know in the coming weeks. The, uh, so a couple of questions. Um, first one is around the purpose of the one-way street, Sinasip being one of the one-ways. What is their purpose as part of our network? Their um, St Asif, Chewham streets across the southern part of the central city, um, Montreal and Durham on the western yep. side, Barbados, Madras, the eastern side. They're the main traffic distributor streets across the central city. Mm -hmm. St. Asaf and Chewham and, uh, and, and also um, as far as St. Asaf and Chewham streets are concerned, they carry the key bus routes in and out from the bus interchange. Um, so, um, yeah, you know, they, they are Chewham and St. Asaf streets are very busy streets. And so what we're dealing with here is a complex mix of busy streets, buses on them, and a lot of frontage and crossing activity. But the, 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 main, the main purpose is to get people in and out of the central city. Yes, and across the inner city. No. So that is not true. So the, un, under the inaccessible city, the idea is to get people in and out of the city using the one ways, and if they want to go across the city to use the avenues. So that was the change made post-quake, but the original intention of Christchurch's one-way streets was to get people across the inner city? True I'm, not sure that, I'm not sure about the intention, but that's probably how they operated. Yeah. Pre-quake. Yeah. But that's what a one-way street is designed to do? Is that not their intention around the entire world? A one-way street is generally designed to move traffic, yes, but I mean that's... To move so more traffic than a regular street. Yeah, they move, they move high volumes, but... Um, but with that comes problems. So I guess um, in, the mo in the modern thinking, um, it, most cities aren't putting in a lot of one-way streets because they're thinking about all road users. Um, they were retained in, in accessible cities to provide good um, traffic movements in and out of the city. Right, so if those two are a major feeder to the bus depot and we're trying to, and we're spending millions of dollars in other areas to increase travel times on the bus, does dropping the speed to 30k an hour reduce that travel time for majority of the buses? No. Um, the 
the signal regime on Tuerman St. Asaph Streets, particularly the inbound yep. buses, um, when the, the hospital bus super stop is completed, the majority of buses there should get a green wave from hospital corner all the way into the interchange. What do I mean by that? Most buses oh, not. might not have to stop uh, at any signals along that corridor. So the critical one is the inbound buses to the interchange so they can maintain their times. Um, but nothing in the proposals before the panel today, and this was raised by a submitter to the panel, nothing before council today should have any material effect on bus journey if time efficiency. So are you saying that a 30k an hour green wave will get you there just as quick as a 50k an hour green wave? No, what I'm saying is on Chewham Street, the buses have a green wave from the bus super stop into the interchange when they're travelling into the city. But didn't all of our one-way systems have green waves on them for everyone anyway? That was why they got a flow? Because w on the four avenues, you don't get a flow, so people tend not to go out and use them because you stop at every second traffic light. And there's some classics where there'll be no one going the other way and 40 cars on Fitzgerald Ave waiting and there's nothing going the other way. Whereas on a one-way system, you get a green wave, it's set at 50k an hour, and you travel across at 50k because there's no conflict. Yeah, yeah, so you still get that progression of 50k's. I, I guess if you go back to pre-quake, whether you got that, um, the ability to move at 50, 50k's due to the numbers of vehicles um, in peak times, you probably, um, probably say that you, you didn't get to move at 50 kilometres an hour, so... The th the, so the difference in travel times between the 30 and the 50 is probably negligible. Okay, and then um, my other uh, point is, uh, well there's two, two ones I'll quickly do. One is around um, the, uh, the hospital gap with what we signed off as council not being delivered. How do we know when we make other changes now that what we sign off will get delivered? Because the pedestrian crossing, which was the amendment made at council, was not put in. Uh, they've just gone ahead and done their own thing. We'll, Council, when they passed the resolution, wanted to include a pedestrian zebra crossing in the pedestrian, but they also requested staff to assess the width of that pedestrian crossing. So we're working with the staff from Motokaro to assess it, but we're waiting for the schools to come back so that we get it. We've only had it operating for a very short period of time. It's something that we've always talked about. We can easily put it back in. So the staff are working with them uh, as per the two resolutions that you've put in there. Um, so they're fully aware, Otakara is fully aware that that need. It's just whether is it going to be a six metre, a three metre, a two metre or whatever. Um, and yes, and it's, and you've made a comment here, request that staff to reassess the width of that the staff are saying, can we wait? They're waiting until the schools go back so we get some normality into the operation of that area before we look at all the conflicts. At the moment, um, because you don't have that, there's not actually a lot of conflict happening at the moment. So they're wanting to just get some more normal conditions running and then they'll assess it and then put in what's appropriate. Okay, different to the way I remember it on the day, but that we'll run with that and to look forward to hopefully there being no incidents before that crossing goes in because it's really unclear down there who gives way to who. So uh, then my other point is around, thank you Dave, the, um, the total number of car parks removed for this, uh, do you know that number? Um, there are four car park spaces being removed on Montreal Street to achieve the gateway and one car park removed on Manchester Street in order to achieve the gateway. So it's just five in total? Because when I looked under the financial implications, when we remove a car park which has financial implications for the council of a number of thousands of dollars per year per car park, because that's the revenue we receive from them, uh, and it must have a financial implication that we care about because we won't make them all free to try and bring more people in. So that does have a value to us as a city. We do not, why is that not included in the report if we're going to lose this many thousands of dollars per year by removal of those car parks? I don't think the ones on Montreal Street are metered car parks. So they're not metered? No. Right, I thought they may have been because of the rapid growth on that part of the city. Uh, uh, Basically, under... basically St. Asa Street's generally the, the limit to a, a metered car park. There are some down Columbus Street and Manchester Street, south of St. Asa Street, but the rest of them yeah. are all north of 
yeah. snare streets or the cutoff. So those ones are freebies? Yeah. No, the, yeah, but they're mainly hours, you know, yeah, like you can only park there for two hours yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah for a turnover, which has, has a value. But yeah, yeah. if the city does grow and get busy, the metering would move, I'd expect. It's, it's, it's an option for council to, mm. to consider that, yes. Mm. Yeah, okay, thank you. Very good. All right, so that's everyone. Um, Sarah? Oh, just really quickly, um, we discussed this earlier briefly about the, the information, so in resolution number seven, I've just flipped through to jump the, the words and contextual, and we yes, talked so about um, the information that's yeah. provided. Um, so, well, I have, a, I have a mover to the resolution. I don't think I've got a seconder, have I? No. no. So, no. would you so like I just to second thought I'd check and see if Mike's would okay you like the words, yeah. and if so, I'll second it. Yeah. You'll second the resolution, and yeah. if Mike's happy, then we'll include the word contextual. Yeah. And... So th th this is getting um, up for the debate. Process question. Yeah, yeah just. Um, I've, I've got um, that one matter dealt with as a separate resolution. Nine and um, ten. Yep. Thank you. Is it item ten? It's points nine and ten in the recommendation. Hang is that on. Correct? There aren't nine and ten. Oh, has it changed? Oh, you Sorry. looking at the previous document. Yeah. What page? 84? Well, yeah. yeah, in the... Oh, you're looking at 12. I'm looking at 9 and 10. And no, 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 no. Yes, but are you page. looking at item 12 or oh. item 13? No, I'm still on. I, I'm ahead. Okay. So item 12. I'm so item 12. I just need to check. You wanted to deal with... It's actually number three. Resolution three approves the proposal to reduce the speed limit from 30 to 10 on the following streets. Is that right? So, um, and yeah, okay, and uh, all right. So, um, we've got a couple of amendments there. Um, uh, which are requesting staff to keep under review, but the mover and seconder are happy with those, and we've got contextual written in. Okay, so that's been moved and seconded. Dion, you have a one more question? So I've just got another question on the build outs, especially the one on St. Asif Street. Are you still proposing to have the build out in the middle of the two lanes? I just can't remember what was discussed on the hearings panel. Because obviously there was the concern from the bus companies around the, the width of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to you, Madam Chair, yeah, that, the, the proposal there is for a painted only um, marking on the carriageway there. Um, as as uh, we reported to the hearings panel, Prior to implementation, all of these threshold arrangements will be safety audited, so we will ensure that none of them achieve, you know, any un unexpected outcomes in terms of. You know, so at this stage, you're not proposing to have a physical build out. No. Okay. No. Right. No. Okay. I'll open it up for debate, Mike. Just got a week slip to show to start with. It's weird. <laughs> oh, it's filtered out. Filtered out the car. Oh, look like at this. Is there a? I'm assigned to. Looks more like you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about Poppy. It's a sandwich. All right. 
St Asaph Street should no longer be seen as a through road. It's a destination in its own right. The previous council designed a street for people, and as that clip shows, people are using it. That clip was a condensed 10 minute window on a weekday and showed during that period 74 pedestrians, a number of whom crossed mid-block. Removed from that clip were the passing motorists, and during that same 10 minutes there were only 17 more cars. This was provided by a submitter against lowering the speed limit because the main transport on the mode, uh, transport mode on St Anthony Street, to his opinion, were cars and therefore it should stay at 50. It has the reverse effect. What it shows was how many people are currently using St Asaph Street to walk. And this is before the school and the Metro Sports facility have opened. It shows that the laneways have created desire lines that prompt people into mid-block crossings. Evidence shows that slowing down speeds saves lives. So this decision will not increase congestion, it will not increase travel times. What it will do is create an even safer environment. The previous council designed and approved a street layout that created a 30 zone environment. An independent safety audit state that it needs to be 30 kilometres per hour. The majority of councillors here today voted last term for St Asa Street to have this low speed design, yet decided in 2016 not to drop the speed. We had an opportunity in 2017 to change the design, and yet the majority of you said no. We are presented with two independent safety reports that clearly show that this road needs to be 30 kilometres per hour. We have the data to show that slow speed zones in our city core have slowed down vehicles and have reduced crashes. We know very shortly that a school with children as young as five will be opening and a couple of years later the Metro Sports Facility. When you read all the submissions, read all the information as the members of the hearings panel have, it is clear that only one decision can be reached. This decision cannot simply be based on numbers. It needs to be based on the quality of information provided to us from both submitters and expert advice. Time and time again there was a mission opposing this for reasons that were not relevant to St Asaph Street or giving no reason at all. While the submissions against add value to the decision making, the sum of that value does not equal better the evidence and submissions for decreasing the speed limit. As leaders of this city, we are charged with making the right decision, even when you think it's not popular. A potential consequence of a no vote today is unthinkable. If we don't agree to a 30 kilometre zone, the next step to ensure that we have a safe environment will be to remove all the car parking on the south side. Your choice. A 30 speed limit that will actually have no negative impact on anyone or the removal of all the car parks on one side of the street at a substantial cost. Unless you do nothing and just wait and hope and possibly pray that no one is seriously injured or killed. Just imagine a five year old running onto a child and hit by a car doing the speed limit of 50 k's an hour. Um, Tim Glenfell. Um, look, thank you. Um, where we have uh, independent safety audits telling us that this low speed environment should be a 30k street, I think that we are between a rock and a hard place in a, in a sense. But that video that was shown by the chair of the hearings panel really does show that this environment has changed already. When we looked at this very early on, when we were talking about the change of the design. I believe at that time it was discussed that the average car speed then along St Asif was 40 k's. Now we've been told that it has changed to around about the average of 30 k's. So the environment is already changing. It's already changed to a high uh, pedestrian area. And as we change further to the school and the Metro Sports facility, we already have Hagley um, Community College on Hagley Ave. But where you have young people who aren't so, or their minds aren't so evolved with regards to speeding traffic, etc., I think we have to look at this changing environment and what our vision was for the central city at the start. Rather than looking at the uh, records of fatalities in the four EVs, maybe it would have been better to look at the pedestrian versus vehicle incidents, and that would have been a better uh, measure to look at. I don't think we have a choice. I think that it has to be a 30k uh, decision. If we stuck with 50k's, one of the big concerns was when the St Asaph Street first came on with regards to change was the loss of parking. And if we stay at 50k's and it is a low speed zone, then what would it be the consequence of that? 
we've heard that it would be the removal of further parking. So that is exactly what people didn't want, and I don't think it's um, a positive ch um, change and a further cost to the city. So I will be supporting the 30 Ks. Thank you. Um, uh, okay, Glenn. Thank, thank you. I've got. I'm going to support this, and I have three main points. The first, I'd like to build on uh, Tim's statement before. Uh, we, he said simple physics. It strikes me that when we look at the table over death and injury risk uh, percentages that we're actually looking at a logarithmic increase, something with which we will all be familiar with. Uh, following the earthquake experience, the Richter scale is built on that. This is not a, a simple, uh, straightforward uh, increase on a fixed scale. It's actually a logarithmic increase uh, when you look at the, the data. I look at the wider street context uh, here and it seems to me it would make sense to bring this into the fold to make it 30 kilometres as well. In terms of speaking for those, which is one of our key roles as elected representatives, speaking for those who do not have a voice or perhaps have less uh, voice than we do. In this case we're actually speaking uh, not only for adults but 5 to 18 year olds. 5 year olds and for some years do not have a developed or any peripheral vision. So they're disadvantaged from the get go uh, in amongst uh, vehicles driven by adults and I think for me uh, what is really important is that as the authority which originally gave the planning consent or would have for this school to go there, do, not, do we not now have a duty of care to keep uh, those citizens of our community as safe uh, over the things over which we do have control, in this case uh, uh, road speed limits. It also strikes me that looking forward when those five year olds are adults and their turn comes to submit on future council speed changes, what will they say? Thank you. Uh, Phil? H having been on the panel it became absolutely clear to me and I think it was unfortunate in fact a lot of the information on the technical part and the speed and the impact of that hadn't been available to a lot of the submitters. Mm. And I think if it had, they would have changed their minds. It certainly focused my mind in being on the panel. And um, Councillor Livingston has referred to that impact and, and, and that um, of the physics. But the basically, when, when drivers are doing 30K, there's a 10% chance of a death when they, if they hit somebody. But at 50K, it increases to 80%. And I just cannot, um, I, I cannot cons think about that at all, and as it, that we um, uh, allow 50k on here when it's already actually 30k, and especially when it comes to those who are vulnerable, and we're talking about kids outside of school, we're also talking about ordinary pedestrians, and we saw some of them, and, and many of those people crossing the street, and also the cyclists. And I think it's, it's unfortunate that, in fact, our, our aim really to change the mode of transport has yet to be really picked up in terms of our psyches. That basically we know that local government, that's what we want to do because we want to have our roads safe, we want to reduce congestion, and central government want the same. But in fact, when it comes to the crunch and people are asked, they st we still think in, in a siloed way in terms of uh, how will it be for me and my motor car or my bike or, or just walking. And I think clearly we've got a lot more to do yet as a council and probably as a country to change that, that thinking really so that in fact speeds do become safe and appropriate and we lower this terrible road toll which we currently have. That's a big part of what this is about. And there's all, there can be all sorts of minor technical changes that councils lot might make. But I just urge you to think of the safety of those who are most vulnerable which is really what this is all about. Yep, uh, Pauline. Yes, um, I think I agree with um, all the points that have been made already. I don't want to repeat them, but um, basically, we, we heard um, that um, in December 2014, the Order and Council basically that demarcated the 30k area, 
But since then, things have changed in St Asaph Street and there has been an organic migration of uh, hospitality, that's the bars, cafes, restaurants, um, which has also caused a huge increase in the pedestrian traffic, which um, was shown to us clearly by the, the chair of the panel today. And also um, we've heard about the school arriving as well, which has a great impact on the, on the street. But cur the current street design has now resulted from a compromise to assuage the resistance to complete parking loss on the south side. And I think that's a really important point to remember. So the design we've ended up with now actually supports the 30K. So our decision today is actually academic. We're formalising what is actually occurring. Now quite a few of the submissions based their opposition on their belief that a slower speed did not reduce injuries, but today we have been assured that speed reduction does increase safety dramatically. The 30k also assists with parking ease and entering and entering driveways. It reduces the pressure on people if they're already travelling slowly, reduces that pressure on panicking to get into a park and being allowed to do so. And um, since the traffic is currently travelling at 30 k's, formalising this limit today will not cause any increase in congestion, which was another concern of submitters who actually lodged opposition. I think that's an important point to note too. So effectively, we're making St Asa Street the new south boundary of the Central City Core 30k zone. Um, and I think that um, our, our new city is different. Uh, and change is not always easy to accept. But I think Christchurch people are becoming accustomed to these changes and getting around our city. It's a new way of getting around, a new way of thinking, and we're now being asked to share the space. So it is a very different city. So on that um, note, I am indicating my support for the hearing panel recommendations. Uh, Dion, then Anne. Uh, this has been a, a pretty tricky process right from uh, word go, uh, especially with all the um, comments and everything that I've had. The consultation has given um, its response as a no to the speed limit change to 30 kilometres an hour. Um, I'll focus on the other bits uh, soon. It has been um, mentioned that many submissions were venting uh, and that it was implied that they shouldn't be um, counted or, or given as much weight into this consultation process. And I do find that comment quite infuriating. Uh, everyone who takes the time and makes a comment to the council in a consultation should be valued. Um, and they are. And I want to see all these views, no matter what they are, are valued and listened to. Yes, some of the comments in the consultation, and I have read most of them twice now, are pointing to a larger disagreement about how the council is delivering road, uh, the road network changes in the central city. And we should listen to that warning uh, and use it as a wake-up call to do things better in the future. Um, we aren't bringing the communities along with us when we're doing these changes. The data and representation of data can be manip uh, manipulated to give an argument either way, uh, whichever way one wants to be, um, have it presented. Many of the comments in the consultation that supported could also be manipulated to give one's outcome that they want, um, and some others in a different way. But again, they are all valuable and worth listening to. There was a large proportion of people who supported um, the, who supported the uh, speed limit reduction, who had an interest in the uh, school on St Asaph Street and also Hagley Ave. Why, is the school, um, why was the school put there in, that, um, in this part of the city in the first place? Sort of still, uh, I have question marks in my mind, but the point is that it's there. Uh, so these are relevant considerations to take into a cons um, consideration for myself. This is where the hearings panel, uh, this is why in the hearings panel I foreshadowed a motion to install a um, school speed zone outside Unlimited School and also Hagley College. I believe this was a problem solving compromise to give a large group who supported the consideration they were seeking, um, but sadly I failed in that attempt. Um, I have, I hate the design of St Asaph Street. I'm just going to put it out there. It's a basket case and in my opinion we've failed the recovery by putting the separated cycleways on the one way streets. Um, and I'm very disappointed by it and I believe we should have had uh, more consideration to actually delivering what was initially put um, and having the cycleways in the south frame. But again, we've got to live with what we've got. Uh, the data can be overwhelming when you look at it. Uh, there's a lot of data there. Most of it presented uh, slower speeds is safe, which is pretty much um, common sense. But without the speed limit, uh, it seems, even implemented, it seems that the street has already been safe by the, um, by the 
uh, design changes. So the question I have is, are we fixing a problem that doesn't exist? But we have also been advised that speed limit safety in that street is advisable by reducing the speed limit. Thank so you. I vote, I, can I just finish? I've got two more, two more sentences, please. Think, yep, two um, more sentences. I voted against it in the hearings panel. The, the issue I face in the, in the decision is the growth of the area, especially the three blocks from Madras to Montreal. In saying this, um, oh, and Southtown I believe is going to be one of the best places of our central city. A saying I follow is leadership is about doing the right thing. Given this, I, hate I have changed my opinion and feel that though the city, and I feel as though as a city councillor, the right thing to do against my own personal view is to reduce the speed limit in line with what I've been told. But I do not like the street design and I think we need to fix it. I don't support the gateways and I support the hospital 10 kilometre an hour speed limit review. Thank you. Um, Anne? Thank you. So this is a uh, really complex, um, it can be, and it has become quite complex. But actually for me, it comes down to a very simple question. Do we value our children, our young people, and our most vulnerable? And is safety one of our uh, most uh, key priorities? I believe it should be. And a relatively straightforward and cost-effective um, speed management measure to reduce speed limits is a tangible evidence that we take the safety of our most vulnerable seriously. So are we serious about this? If we are, we will endorse the excellent work that uh, the panel has done and their recommendations today. Let's make this city one that has a reputation for looking after and valuing our young people and our most vulnerable. Um, uh, David, uh, Vicky, <coughs> Oh, um, look, as one, I think that I'm pretty sure I did oppose the original design of um, mm -hmm. St. Asa mm -hmm. Street. I have some uh, reservations and I share a lot of the sentiments that uh, Councillor Swiggs has uh, expressed a few moments ago. Having said that, I do support the uh, 30k inner core uh, speed zone for the inner core. I'm, I'm having extreme difficulty supporting number one and may ask for it to be put separately. St Asa Street, I believe, is a major thoroughfare that connects the city with um, a via Rickett and Ave with the west and south of the, of the city. Uh, the design, I feel, was extremely poor. And now, as a consequence of that design, we are basic, we've basically created a street that forces a 30 km um, speed zone through it. So, I'm having some extreme reservations about the whole thing. Um, I'm likely to vote against one. Vicky? It seems to me that there are four things here. Um, the safety audit says 30k is the required speed on that, um, on that street, on St Asif Street. If we were directors of a company and we ignored such safety advice and somebody was hurt or injured or killed on that street, we would be personally liable uh, for that. Uh, I think it's really important to listen to safety audits. I think they matter a huge amount. The current effective speed limit on that street is between 30 and 37 kilometres an hour. That's what actually happens on that street. I use it every day. Um, and that's the way the street suggests that it operates, and that's what actually happens. So to suddenly say the speed limit is 50, when actually the lights are not... Um, tailored for that at all would just be crazy. Um, the school has gone there because it's a Ministry of Education school and they choose the site. Uh, so our Tawhiti Unlimited Discovery will have a, made a role of 670 kids um, from, five, from year 1 to 13 and beyond. Um, the parents come there a lot. They will also bring preschoolers there the parents can stay there all day if they want to. They're very involved in the education um, process and the kids use the entire city all day. Um, so I'm not sure when the speed zone <laughs> concept could possibly operate. It would need to be there from about seven in the morning to sometimes eight at night uh, in terms of a speed zone outside a special character school that uses the entire city as its learning environment. Um, and I think the other thing, I actually think probably one of the best things that uh, the previous government did was to put that 30k speed limit in the central city. And I think one of the reasons for it is that what we're seeing 
is massive disruption to the transport technologies. And um, we've seen lime scooters arrive and just go crazy in the city and just be adopted so fast. Uh, and what we're going to see in the next year, five years, is massive more disruptive technologies in transport. And the joy of Christchurch now is that we have a city where we can experiment with new possibilities and we can try things and it's actually safe to try those things. So what's happened with Lime Scooters in Auckland has been radically different than what's happened with Lime Scooters in Christchurch because of the city centre and the way in which it's been designed to allow really good access for pedestrians, bikes and all sorts of other modes of transport that we don't even yet know about. Uh, so this to me seems a complete no-brainer. I voted for 30k last time this came up. Um, it seems absolutely sensible uh, that we would make this street 30k's and I'm really keen that we do that. I've got Andrew, um, uh, Jimmy, uh, <coughs> Jamie and Aaron and Yanni. Thank you. Now this does appear to be complex and I came here with a, with a very open mind. Um, finding the balance between the response to a community consultation and robust technical advice is, is always going to be difficult, but that's the job that we're here to do. Um, but to me, um, from the report and from the answers to questions and from the discussion today, um, there's a, a reasonably obvious set of facts. We've got a safety audit that recommends 30 Ks. We've got a current operating speed of around 30 Ks. We've constructed the street in a way that supports and in fact suggests um, that this should be 30 Ks. We've got a school going in. We've got a late night economy that generates significant foot traffic. And um, one of the things that resonated for me in the figures that Yanni had requested around the fatalities was the role of alcohol in the outcomes or the fact that some of those fatalities had occurred. And that's relevant to the late night economy on St. Asaph Street when you've got people exiting and moving between bars. Um, and in many cases, using the cycleway and the road as an extension of the pavement when it gets busy down there. Um, if we were to leave this as 50 k's, there would be a significant loss of parking, which given um, previous feedback on St. Asaph Street would not be supported. Um, and there would be significant cost and significant change involved in doing that. But above all, road safety, and if we're responsible governors of this city, road safety should be absolutely paramount, is one of the key issues for me here. Um, no pedestrian wants to be hit by a car. No cyclist wants to be hit by a car, but perhaps more to the point, no driver of a car wants to be involved in an accident including or involving a pedestrian or a cyclist. So having come here with a very open mind today, um, I'm now absolutely, convin absolutely convinced that we should be supporting the 30k speed limit. Thank you. Um, Jimmy? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. Because uh, these are changing war, you know, the the, the CBD also the change being changed every day, but how to meet update the, the the needs update the the, the the kind of the needs that's most important because the if we review today and compare to the two years ago or even the seven years ago after earthquake every day is a difference especially at moments more and more the people the, the visitors the pedestrian. The cyclists, the motorists, the essential tourism are come to the uh, back to the uh, CBD. So if we review this old core value, you know, core kind of core center, most of the, the, the street, the current street is a 30k. If we like St. Asaph or the Hagley Avenue or Rick Avenue, we are keep the, the 50k less inconsistent and also the you know the together uh, the uh, drivers get lost, you know, confused, etc. So keep the consistency is important. The other ones, uh, we all review those the kind of the figure, you know, 30k, 40k, 50k. Uh, the death rate, 30k uh, drop to the 10 percent. 40k increase to 32. Your 50k, 80 percent. That's a serious. You will still keep the lost the summer street. The uh, 50k create in the high risk. There's a uh, there's a uh, this. This external, the social, the, 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 the cost, whether it's paid by the 
by the ratepayer or by the taxpayer. You need to consider the the uh, the this this one. Especially the I totally agree, you know, the staff in the also my fellow counters meeting. The kids we need to more care if the this the new school will be open in April of the this year. And also the 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 new the uh, the metro sports facility will be built again you know, in surrounding the area. Then we need to take this the most seriously. So I agree, Janet I, I totally agree the uh, hearing panel recommendation. Only the paragraph two and the paragraph five. You know, I'm still doubt. You know, the, because while the, most of the street we establish the new series hall location, but why the why in front of the the hospital we are not set up. This is my particular concern. We need to also need to set up, particularly in the, the paragraph this and the uh, paragraph five. And also, the, if we set up those uh, series locations, you know, then the paragraph two, we can reduce the, to the 30K as well. So, so consistent with the, all those the CBD the street. These two, and we need to review as quickly as possible. If we uh, start you. mentioning so in April, I agree. Otherwise, I, I'm not support <laughs> these two paragraphs. Thank you. Uh, Jamie. Thanks. Um, the one, the items that I won't be supporting here are, are the, uh, uh, what are they called, the thresholds um, or the, the gateways, just purely because uh, with the conversation that we've been having, it's, it's around the road layouts and the signage which is going to suggest that, so I think more build outs and more loss of, of uh, on street parking um, is, is probably not a positive and the outcome that you're trying to achieve by it is going to be achieved anyway simply like I said by the street treatment and the signage so I won't be su supporting those gateways I'm happy to not alter the speed on Hagley Ave outside the hospital um, because actually going back to those street treatments uh, again um, the, the street itself and that treatment doesn't suggest that uh, that a four lane thoroughfare is is 30k record on Ave not Hagley Ave yeah sorry, yeah, um, sorry. Yeah. Um, Hagley Ave record on Ave Outside the hospital. Outside the hospital. Yeah. 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 Yes. Perfect. Thank you. And I, I, I will support the 10Ks uh, for the hospital gap on Oxford Terrace, just because Oxford Terrace anyway is 10Ks, so that makes sense to join that up. As for St Asaph Street, you know, th this is a tricky one. Like the Deputy Mayor, like most of you in this room, I've come into this with an open mind. I can see both sides of it. Um, I think I've got to the point where I, I actually don't believe that it makes that much of a difference, to be perfectly honest. Um, the elephant in the room that I think actually deep down everyone knows is that Snassif Street is just really badly designed. It feels dangerous, it's too narrow. Uh, so um, you, you'll struggle to drive down Snassif Street and ever see two large vehicles driving side by side. Two buses won't drive side by side. A lot of people tend to drive in the centre of the road. Want to take your life in your hands, have a baby seat in the back of a car and try and find a park and take that baby seat out. Uh, now that I have children now, we just avoid the places down there because it's a badly designed road when you've got babies or you're trying to get out or, or find a park. And the build outs unfortunately hamper manoeuvrability. So I, I think that um, the point that I'd like to make with this is not just to have a beat up on that, but for us to be cognizant of what the realities around the street are and try uh, and find an opportunity to, to address what the real fundamental issue with Snassif Street is. So let's review it, uh, let's keep this in mind and let's, let's fix it. But right now what we have in front of us is 50Ks or 30Ks. You can't go 50Ks, so th it's pretty stupid to have a sign telling you to do a speed that you can't do. So the road is dangerous, the road doesn't work, they go 30Ks anyway, so, le so leave it at 30Ks. In my view it's not actually changing it to 30Ks, it's keeping it at 30Ks. Uh, Aaron? Um, well, I've had overwhelming feedback myself beyond uh, the submissions on this. Uh, it's uh, around St Asaph Street and it's not just on this consultation, it was leading into that and it's similar to what everyone's mentioned. Uh, a lot of people are pretty disgruntled by what's happened there. Um, and uh, now the feedback's two to one against what we are deciding on today so most of us probably received phone calls from residents that ask are we going to listen as a council to what they say uh, so that's the question I put to everyone do we listen uh, the 10k in the gap at Oxford Terrace there absolutely support that it feels like a car park that's a car park speed and uh, that'll work really well there the 10k I have found out have confirmed that it, it does apply to the footpath so 
please don't run through there anyone or get up too much speed in your wheelchair or uh, certainly if you're cycling through there you'll be restricted to 10k an hour as well so that'll come as a surprise uh, to a few people um, now the bits I just want to um, speak to around the 30k versus 50k is the southern frame had that beautiful central cycleway through it that linked up with the ECAN building, with the hospital campus, with the university campus at the hospital, the whole lot. Somewhere along the way someone's dropped the ball and that hasn't been finished, although there is a massive laneway through there for those that haven't gone down. It's a multi-million dollar stunning laneway, one of the best in the world with no one in it. So um, if the gun club need to move we could offer them that because they certainly wouldn't hit anyone. Uh, it's unused it would have been great as a cycleway and pedestrian access through there it is there uh, we should be taking the cycleway off St Asim Street the one-way streets I believe are a thoroughfare through the inner city and if you're going to the hospital if you live in the east side of the city how do you get to the hospital in a hurry I'd like to pose that question to anyone here um, you can ring an ambulance they do take on average 14 minutes to get to your place then they'll take you to the hospital or you can put your child or your mum or yourself in the car and take yourself there um, most cars are automatic so you can lose a limb and still get yourself there uh, it is how do you get from the east side of the city to the hospital that's my question how do you do it you can go down to Nassau Street at 30k an hour uh, you would get there quicker if the lights were green waved at 50k an hour. You could take the, our preferred routes as a city on the four avenues, but those lights aren't sequenced. And uh, you don't have the authority to run red lights, so you'll wait at traffic lights to get yourself to the hospital. And uh, so that is my question for people coming from the east side of the city. How do you get there in a hurry? Or is a hospital not that important? There's another question for us to ask ourselves as we plan our, and, and deliver on our inner city projects. So for me, that is the stickler for St Asim Street. The cycleway should not be there. We should be reviewing whether it comes off. Um, because also, ironically, in the uh, press today, there's a story about the uh, uh, effects of lead yep. um, on people's breathing. Uh, yeah. So yeah, cycle next to a busy road, get as much lead as you can and look for the impact. Thank you. Yanni. Um, I've just asked staff to put some things up. So a question was asked before around what are these routes for? In the Accessible City Plan, these were for car travel. So Nassau Street and Chilham Street are the main distributor streets in our city. If staff could just go to the next one. Um, so I think context is really important here. We are completely confused as a city and as central government about what we're trying to achieve in our central city. The time has got to be to review the Accessible City Transport plan. I don't know if stuff can just put the next next one up. Trying to. Okay, cool. So I'll just keep talking. There was one submission in particular that really resonated with me, of someone who was quite concerned about what we were proposing, and that basically took. Uh, uh, it said, "Please take a slow walk through some areas of the CBD, looking with a visitor to the city eyes. It is a battlefield of signage. You'll find there are already so many different signs trying to convey what is happening in the area." These are in relation to speed, cyclists, parking, no parking, parking duration, lanes, one ways, turn or no turn, traffic lights, etc. It has become a nightmare that can only be summed up as a confusing maze that is for local, uh, is very local. Imagine how the visitor feels. So, you know, I think we've really overcomplicated and overdesigned our central city. Um, and I think actually we need to take people with us. That's really important. We've got resident surveys showing that people's dissatisfaction with us is at all time high. Uh, people don't feel that we're listening to them or that they can have influence on our decisions. Clearly through this consultation, people have overwhelmingly expressed a view of concern. So I think this needs more work. Some of the things that I think we should be considering are, again, reducing speed limits in the small narrow streets within our four avenues. Um, putting in a 15k or a 10k speed limit slow zone outside the school. I totally understand the need for children and young people to feel safe, but let's slow the traffic right down. There's still a risk if you go to 30k. Ultimately, I don't think the 30k speed limit is going to make any difference at all. We've already heard that the speed limit, people are going about 30 to 37. Overwhelmingly, people were concerned at the lack of enforcement, uh, and I think actually the community, we used to have some great sayings about um, the, the knowledge of the community, um, the collective knowledge of the community can often exceed the knowledge of the experts or the wisdom of the experts 
And I do agree, in this particular case, that seems to be sensible. Unfortunately, you don't have the other slides. I was gonna show you a beautiful photo of the south frame. That is where the cycling and pedestrian should be going in this area. Um, and the key walking route that was identified in the accessible city plan was also, um, there we go, just quickly um, bring it up. That's the key traffic distributor street, and that's St. Asa Ventuum. And if we just go to the next two, which won't take long, this was the south frame, which was the key cycling and walking corridor. And just the final one, which will show you the beautiful south frame that was supposed to, okay, it's not. Um, <laughs> it's, they, they've got it wrong. But anyway, it, it is, it's just in conclusion. Um, it's clear that we need to review the accessible city plan. It's not working at all. It's a complex and confused plan that uh, doesn't work for so many people. So we need to review the district plan. If we want land use and traffic corridor planning to work well, then we need to look at the district plan as well, how land use decisions are made. So my suggestion is we pause, we do more work on this. I can't support wasting money now coming up with an interim solution when there's things like the Metro Sports that still need to be resolved. And as such, I won't be supporting this today. Okay, anyone else? I'll put uh, Mike. Close the debate. Thank you. Um, just stop the shoe dicks. How much weight do you put to that submission opposing this proposal? Now, I value every single submission, but when I weigh that against expert advice, scientific evidence that proves that slowing speed saves lives, it doesn't add much weight. And like I said during my debate, it all adds up. But the amount of that does not actually surpass the evidence we have and the submissions for reducing the speeds. I know Darren Kewen says that he cannot support saying that's two to one against, yet he's going to support Oxford Terrace, which is also two to one against. It seems to me that some councillors fixate on popular decision making. We all want progress, but so many of us refuse to accept change. We have been faced now with a design that many councillors who actually said yes to now suddenly say no to the one thing that we need to do to actually make it safe. You know, I accept that robust debates around recommendations from hearings panel is actually very worthwhile. Yet I note councillors who continually tell, tell us to not relitigate these recommendations are here today doing exactly what they say we shouldn't do. I actually welcome this debate, it's healthy debate. It shows that we're actually democratic. Um, but please, if you're going to be sitting around this table constantly tell us not to open up these things that we've made recommendations, had recommendations from hearings panel, it's a little bit ironic that suddenly, you're suddenly starting to relit relitigate it. Or oh, Matt? <laughs> Thank you. Well, actually, I'll put the motion. Um, <laughs> all those in favour say aye. What? Those opposed what? say no. Are you putting these separately? Like, oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> let's let's. Well, we'll we'll carve these off. Um, can we go down to the to to the separate one? So that's the the 10k speed limit for sections of Oxford Terrace and Antigua Street. Um, so sorry, you're doing so two this is, point. No, well, point. I wanted to start at the bottom and work my way up. Oh. If that's okay. There's no. Eight recommendations. No, okay. Well, we, well, we, yeah, okay. Well, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Why don't we start top. at one? We'll I, start at number I one. Yeah. So number one is to approve <laughs> uh, the the proposed 30k slow speed zone extension to Sanasif Street. Um, between Madras and Hagley, Hagley from Selwyn to Rickerton, and not to improve, approve the proposal to reduce the speed limit from 50 to 30 on, on um, Rickerton Avenue in front of Christchurch Hospital. Well, so sorry, can you put Sanasa perhaps? Yeah. They're quite, yeah, they're, they're just different ones. Like some people have spoken in favour of some of these and not of others. So, we, yeah, we had people indicate what they wanted to vote on separately. Yes. So I will, um, and we had them separated out on that basis. So it might have been helpful just to have that clear. So, um, so if I start with approve the proposal to reduce the speed limit from 30, 50 to 30 on Sanasif Street from Madras to Hagley. Yep. 
All those in favour say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. 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 And would you just stick up your hand for no and I'll have them recorded, those that want to. Yanni, Aaron, David. Jimmy Spence. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, approve the proposal from Hagley Ave from Selwyn Street to Rickerton Ave. All those in favour say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. 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 Okay, so no. stick up your hand for though for no. So no, that's David, no, that's Jamie, and Aaron. Um, and. And then, um, so that's carried. Does not approve the proposal to reduce the speed limit from 50 to 30 on the following streets. Well, on Rickerton Ave. You don't need to put on the following streets with an A. You just change it to Rickerton Ave in front of Christchurch Hospital. Um, so, uh, um, all those in favour say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That's carried. Um, the proposed 10k speed limit for sections of Oxford Terrace and Antigua Street. Um, I'll put them all together. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Um, and then the 30k gateway thresholds um, on the listed streets. Does anyone want any of them put separately or just on block? I'll put the motion, um, hang on, sorry, this, can I just go up, because you've got there the panel further notes, um, sorry? No, 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 I, no, sorry, it was the consideration, reconsideration of the gateway on Stuart Street. Yeah, okay, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it's just noting. Yeah. Um, do we want to note that, though? I mean, or, or, or is it just simply, do we note it? I mean, it's written as the panel notes, so I don't, you know, sorry. The council notes, okay. So I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. No. Um, do you want to stick up your hands for no? Um, Yanni, uh, uh, Aaron, Dion, um, Jamie and David. So that's carried. The next one... Uh, what? Does not appro approve that. Okay, well, because it was a proposal to adjust the speed limit threshold locations, um, uh, I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. And then um, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, and the first one is requesting that future consultations with transport elements have appropriate technical and contextual information available. Um, which I think will, will certainly help. Um, and then uh, requesting staff to keep under review the, the Stewart Street, Rickerton Ave, Antigua, and to report back to ITE if um, conditions warrant a speed change. So I'll put that motion. <coughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda, um, I think, is just a, it, it, it's the implementation of that. Um, do, do people want me to just go through each each one? So that, and, and can I just assume that, that it's moved by Mike and seconded by Sarah? that uh, how people voted on the original ones are just simply reflected um, in here. So I'll, 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 put the, I'll, I'll, I'll put the motion and um, 
And uh, I mean, the motion is that the, uh, the the voting record will reflect the decisions that were taken on the previous um, motion. So um, that's been moved by Mike, seconded by Sarah. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Um, and I will now resolve that we um, exclude the public for all of the reasons set out on the agenda, seconded by Andrew, and I'll put that motion. Um, all those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you very much to the staff for um, the work that you've done on that. Um, and uh, you know we've put a lot of effort into that. Um, could we have a quick break for a cup of tea, and um, we'll come back here and get. We've we've got a lunch at one o'clock. <laughs>